hoping to launch our program in January of 2019. Uh, so we're looking to do a two-semester program. So the first semester will cover the basic topics, um, what you need to run a successful campaign mm -hmm. for office. So fundraising is a crucial component. 66% of women are not able to fundraise or they find fundraising the biggest challenge on a campaign. So we definitely want to address those needs, give them the tools that they need to be successful fundraisers, no matter what level of government they run for. Branding and messaging, again, when you form a campaign, whether you're Democrat or Republican, branding and messaging is very important. You have to have the right message, you have to have the right literature, the right flyers, all these mm -hmm. different things. Uh, message development and delivery, right? So when you're out there on the campaign trail and you're making a speech or if you're attending a rally, if you're attending an event in the community, you have to have your message ready and on point and you have to be able to deliver that to people. Mm -hmm. um, you know, how to set up a fundraising team, how to set up a finance team for your campaign, get out the vote efforts. So that's all in the first semester. And then the second semester, once they complete that, will be what happens once you get into office. So developing relationships with your constituents, leveraging those relationships, how to use your position as a public office holder to advocate for issues of importance to your community, how to keep your files accurate, how your office should be displayed, where to find an office, how to set up an office. All of these wow. things are very important. They're, it's really the nitty gritty of running campaigns for office. So. That's amazing just listening to this. <laughs> you, you mentioned a couple things that I didn't even think of, and of course that's not my realm, but <coughs> you know, having an expert that's why people will utilize the services because there's so many things that I may not be aware of or that might get overlooked mm -hmm. because of the fact that you're not aware. Right. Or you're not sure. It's not only that you're not aware, but you're not sure where to turn to for those resources. And Dare to Run wants to be kind of the anchor, the pillar for women who need those resources but don't know where to turn. Absolutely. I love <coughs> it. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. Welcome back. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. I'm Lydia Patel. So, Rochelle, great first two segments. Very informative. We <coughs> love being able to have in information like this for people. Um, so, 2019 is going to be a great year. I mm -hmm. think it's going to be pretty informative. Let's talk about some of the events that you have coming up. Sure. So, um, we have our Giving Tuesday Charity Night event, which is coming up on November 27th, which is Giving Tuesday, of course. It's a huge day for nonprofit organizations around the country. Uh, so we're going to be hosting it in partnership with LMHQ, which is located at 150 Broadway. Uh, we do have an event up on our Facebook page, so if you want to check out facebook.com slash dare to run, it's listed under Giving Tuesday. It has the huge Giving Tuesday logo. We're going to have dinner, uh, amazing dinner planned for you, drinks, unlimited wine and beer available for purchase, and we're going to have a presentation by Laura Frederick who's the CEO of the Ask. She's a phenomenal uh, fundraiser. She's fundraised for major organizations like Planned Parenthood, different Planned Parenthoods all around the country, Southern Poverty Law Clinic, and a number of other women's organizations. And she's going to do a remarkable presentation for women candidates, specifically addressing what they need to focus on as to become professional female fundraisers on their campaigns. Wow, <coughs> professional female fundraiser. Mm -hmm. I love it because that is so <coughs> challenging you know, trying to get the team and, and, and a lack of money and resource, financial resources to actually hinder your campaign. You won't get very far. But on average, just so people could have a little bit of context at home and understanding, if you're running, let's say, on a local level, very, very <coughs> local level, maybe a district leader, how much funds on average does it really take to reach if you're just trying to target within your area in Brooklyn, do the subway stops? How much money are we looking at? You know, for a district leader, that's a very local position. You could probably get away on a couple of grand, maybe two or three thousand dollars. The higher the position you go, the more money obviously you're going to need. So, state assembly, you need at least ten thousand and up. State senate, ten thousand and up. Once you get to the much higher levels, like house and senate, you're talking several hundred thousand, or possibly if you're an incumbent, you're probably going to need a couple of million dollars. You know, Hillary Clinton, when she ran mm -hmm. for senate the second time, she had a war chest of over at least seven million dollars. So, the higher the level you go in terms of what office you're running for, the more money you need. Wow, and I, I did figure <coughs> that because of course when you're looking at <coughs> candidacy for, for president, 
they all were in the millions mm -hmm. and the money gets taken up like that like it just goes so quick so why is that is it because advertisement costs more when you're doing political or sure so uh, especially when you're running for president obviously you're gonna have to spend more you need those TV spots you need the political ads but you also having money is important but it's also how you spend the money that's important right, right? so if you know that you're not doing well in a particular state you have to maybe put a little bit more funding and a little bit more money to advertise in that state like Hillary Clinton for example she did wonderfully on the coast she did well in New York she did well in California the whole East Coast and West Coast loved Hillary but you know in the middle of the country there might have been a discrepancy with some of the voters so more of her funding should have been targeted in those states right so fundraising is important but it's also how you channel the fundraising and how you channel the funds that really makes an impact and they can get a lot of this information through the course we dare to run. <coughs> yes, absolutely. Through our fundraising seminar, we're going to provide not only how to fundraise, what the different fundraising strategies are, but why it's important to tailor your fundraising to meet those different pockets, right? So if you're a ha running for house or um, assembly in New York State, you know, there may be parts of your district that are very you know, geared toward one party and other parts may be geared toward the opposite party. You need to put a little bit more effort into trying to get some of those um, opposing party views to get to them to vote for you, which is really important. That is very important. I just love <coughs> how the course is structured. How did you um, actually manage to, you know, it's <coughs> like when you open up a restaurant, what, f what makes the final cut? What makes the menu? Mm -hmm. How did you line up what's actually going to be on the final course outline? Sure. I mean, so a lot of it was based on the research that I did during my first master's degree, you know, looking at Hillary Clinton's path to public office, which was very different than Sarah Palin's path. path. Hillary Clinton was, um, you know, she made the decision to run herself. Nobody had to ask her. Nobody had to tell her, oh, by the way, you should run for president. She said, I'm going to run, and that's it. You know, she had the career. She had the background. She made the decision, whereas Sarah Palin, it was, you know, she was kind of recruited a little bit more by members of the Republican Party. John McCain, for example, believed that she it would be good to have a woman vice presidential candidate, you know, to maybe pull away some of those Hillary voters and maybe get them to come over to the Republican mm -hmm. side. Unfortunately, that strategy didn't work. But typically with Republican candidates, it's more of a recruitment process. You know, what we've seen of Republican candidates across the country at the higher levels of office is that they're recruited to run. It's not necessarily a decision that they make. So that's definitely something you notice. And so in looking at those two paths, Hillary Clinton's path versus Sarah Palin's path, you you know, you learn what's important. Hillary Clinton is a master fundraiser. She's, she's a machine. She can fundraise millions and millions of dollars. You know, Sarah Palin, obviously her position was different. She was running as kind of the sidebar to John McCain, but her fundraising skills were maybe not as good. You know, she was newer. She had less political experience. So fundraising is important. Message development and delivery was important. You know, Sarah Palin, there were a lot of remarks and commentary about the skirts that she wore and the heels that she wore and the way she wore her hair. She put out a very feminine image, right? Whereas Hillary Clinton, you know, her hashtag is Pantsuit Nation. So there's two very different messages you're getting with both women. But when you look at their different paths to office, how they mobilized other voters, particularly female voters, mm -hmm. you really start to see, you know, how the avenues, how the, how the roads to public office shape differently for Democratic women versus Republican women. And it's funny because you would think that, and this could just be my train of thought, that the Republican woman would have been more <coughs> on the feminine side, but it's, Hillary loves her pantsuits. She loves them and she's not giving them she's up. Not you giving know, them she's up. not giving them up. And, and they get a hashtag out of it. And they have groups, like groups with yes. thousands of people on Facebook with the Pantsuit Nation hashtag. It's very popular. But you know, Sarah Palin was, she was identified as the more feminine candidate yes. because of her glasses. They were very feminine. The school her teacher. Her hair. Was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. The school teacher, the school woman. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the neat bun. <coughs> the and the glasses and then the skirts the and the heels were very important Hillary Clinton never wore heels on the campaign trail very small little wedges yes. never heels and the pants it's, it's a marked difference in their personalities and the image that they're trying to convey to the American public do you think if Hillary were to switch that or come out with that that would actually hinder her or she would gain a new <coughs> fan base or it I might not matter I don't think it would matter for her I think you know for her, you know, she's, first of all, she's older than Sarah Palin. She has more experience, and she's sort of on a different track. I don't think it would hurt her maybe to try a pair of heels or something like that, even small heels, something, or maybe once in a while wear a skirt. I don't think that would be terrible, but terrible. But I love those pantsuits, you know, and I think the pantsuits are what make Hillary Hillary. So. Absolutely. I couldn't mm -hmm. agree more because it wasn't until a couple people pointed it out. They're like, she always wears <coughs> pantsuits, and they're typically longer blazers, nothing that's cut 
above the hip, you know. Mm-hmm. And her styling is very, you know, and even from her makeup, these are all things <coughs> that very subtle yet could sway a vote, even though it has mm-hmm. nothing to do with the political message. The overall image mm-hmm. is still super important. Yes, very important. And she has these large pieces that she wears. Like, if you notice, she wears very bold enigmatic statements like uh, peace statements with the necklaces Sarah Palin would never wear that she's very simple with the jewelry very simple very feminine you know it's a very specific look she's trying to convey much absolutely. different than Hillary yeah absolutely mm-hmm. how do we get in contact with you for everyone at home sure so you can visit us online dare to run dot org um, we have all the information about our events our partnerships and you know the tr- the program that we're planning to do for the upcoming 2019 year. You can also check us out facebook.com slash dare to run inc. We're on Twitter at dare to run inc. and Instagram at dare to run 2018. So please follow us, like us, and send us an email info at dare to run org if you have any questions. Rachel, that was mm-hmm. so <coughs> amazing. Thank you so much for joining us on the program, and we're looking forward to having you back and hearing more information about what's going to be in store for you. I'm looking forward to coming back. Thank always. you. Mm-hmm. And as always, if you have any questions or comments, you can send us an email at info at beyondfocusmedia.com. I'm your host, Lydia Patel. Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll be back again next week. Same time, same place you're watching, Beyond Focus TV. Stay with us. Beyond Focus TV show wants and needs your feedback. Did we blunder? Please let us know so we can improve. Was the show helpful to you? Drop us a note so we can share the success with our staff members. Is there something you think we could do better? We welcome new ideas and new approaches to old ideas. Do you have a great suggestion? Let us know and we'll work on it. If you would like to share your comments anonymously, please send us an email at info at beyondfocusmedia.com. If you want to get in touch with the executive producer directly, send him an email at gene at beyondfocusmedia.com. We really look forward to hearing from you.